Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today we will go through the guideline by the British Society for Hematology on the investigation and management of erased serum ferritin, focusing on what is relevant in primary care only. A link to it is in the episode description. If you haven't already, I recommend that you check out the last two episodes where we covered the laboratory diagnosis of both iron deficiency and functional iron deficiency. Right, let's jump into it. Serum ferritin level is one of the most commonly requested investigations in both primary and secondary care. Whilst low serum ferritin levels invariably indicate reduced iron stores, erased serum ferritin can be due to multiple different causes, including iron overload, inflammation, liver or renal disease, malignancy and metabolic syndrome. Reduced ferritin levels are only found in patients with reduced body iron stores. However, in some circumstances, for example in patients with coexistent inflammatory disorders, ferritin may be within the normal or elevated range, even when iron stores are reduced and anemia is due to iron deficiency. On the other hand, the clinical laboratory management of patients with raised ferritin values is not that well recognised, and this is why we're covering it here. Ferritin levels can be raised because of inflammation, tissue damage, as well as by any condition or treatment that leads to a genuine increase in iron stores, for example blood transfusions or iron effusions. Most path labs in the UK simply report 300 to 400 micrograms per litre as the upper limit of normal for ferritin in adult males and 150 to 200 micrograms per litre as the upper limit of normal for adult females. There is however considerable variation in response to age, ethnic origin and sex. Mean ferritin values in neonates are high, around 200, and remain so for about two months. Mean ferritin values are higher at all ages in adult black males. In black females, higher ferritin values are only seen after the menopause. In multi-ethnic population studies in the USA, elevated ferritin values are found more frequently in Afro-Caribbean and Asian subjects when compared to white or Hispanic populations. Indeed, very high ferritin levels, over a thousand, are two or three times more common in black and Asian volunteers, despite not having a true iron overload issue. So, it is argued that the normal ranges should take into account the variation due to age, gender and possibly ethnic origin. Seroferritin is the most frequently requested hematinic assay in the UK and some 50% of ferritin requests are made from primary care. The commonest causes of a high ferritin without iron overload relate to inflammatory disorders, malignancy, chronic alcohol consumption, liver disease or metabolic abnormalities. For the majority of people with a raised ferritin, chronic inflammatory or infective causes as well as liver disease alcohol and malignancies will be the more likely conditions seen in practice. And if clinically apparent, further investigations of the causes of the high ferritin may not be necessary. Let's look at the different causes individually. In the liver, elevated ferritin is seen in almost any cause of liver injury, including alcoholic and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, as well as viral hepatitis. In the kidneys, ferritin is not a useful marker of iron stores in patients with CKD. And it is elevated in almost half of patients on maintenance hemodialysis, but the raised ferritin does not represent iron that is available for erythropoiesis. For CKD patients on treatment with erythropoietin stimulating agents, iron supplementation should routinely be offered unless the ferritin is higher than 800. In malignancy, ferritin is frequently elevated and cancer has been the most frequent association in some studies of the causes of a high ferritin. In inflammatory and infective disorders, ferritin levels may correlate with disease activity, for example in SLE and rheumatoid arthritis. Other inflammatory conditions and acute or chronic infections will also produce elevations in ferritin, 
usually with elevated CRP, but normal transferrin saturation. Mention should be made of anemia of chronic disease, also termed anemia of inflammation, the pathogenesis of which includes a state of functional iron deficiency, which we discussed in the last episode. A more recently described cause of race ferritin is the metabolic syndrome, sometimes referred to as dysmetabolic hyperferritinemia. Patients typically demonstrate elevated ferritin levels with a normal transfer saturation. Then we have hematological causes and a variety of red cell disorders characterized by infective erythropoiesis or hemolysis are associated with increased ferritin. This includes thalassemic disorders, hereditary spherocytosis, and inherited or acquired sideroblastic anemias. Prolonged or chronic transfusion therapy, for example in patients with major hemoglobinopathies, myelodysplastic syndromes, or during treatment for hematological malignancies, will also cause transfusional iron overload. So in summary, reactive causes of raised ferritin levels, including malignancy, inflammatory disorders, renal failure, liver disease, and metabolic syndrome, are all considerably more common than true iron overload. There are other genetic causes of an elevated ferritin, including hemochromatosis, still disease, and other rare disorders. How do we investigate raised serum ferritin? When ferritin is raised, the most crucial questions to ask are Is it secondary to a known clinical condition? And is it associated with iron overload? A clinical history and examination together with a few simple investigations will often reveal the probable underlying cause. In particular, patients should be questioned about alcohol intake and other risk factors for liver disease, transfusion history or oral iron supplementation, family history of iron overload, and the presence or absence of diabetes, obesity and hypertension, as well as for symptoms and signs that may point to an underlying inflammatory or malignant disorder. Initial investigations should include a full blood count, repeat ferritin, transferrin saturation, renal function tests, liver function tests with viral hepatitis serology if LFTs are abnormal, and inflammatory markers such as CRP and ESR. A high HbA1c may indicate impaired glucose tolerance, and raised serum lipids, body mass index, and hypertension may point towards underlying metabolic syndrome. An abdominal ultrasound may demonstrate an echogenic liver, suggesting alcohol or non-alcohol related fatty liver disease. Iron overload is more likely to be present if the ferritin has risen progressively or the ferritin is higher than 1000 micrograms per liter. It is worth noting that acute infections, menstrual bleeding and recent blood donation can temporarily reduce transfer saturation to within the normal range in patients with iron overload, indicating that normal transfer saturation does not completely exclude iron overload situations. In the setting of persistent borderline results, genotyping for hemochromatosis should be performed. Males with ferritin more than 300 and transfer saturations more than 50%, and females with ferritin more than 200 and transfer saturation more than 40% will usually have iron overload. We will leave this here as we're not looking into the diagnosis and management of hemochromatosis today. How do we manage erased ferritin without elevated transfer saturation? In otherwise well patients with unexplained elevated ferritin, and transfer saturation below 40% in females or 50% in males, a period of observation may be informative. Stable, moderately increased levels may not require further investigations, whereas fluctuating levels are typically seen in hepatic steatosis or alcohol excess. Persistent and explained high levels, especially at levels higher than 1,000, merits consideration of onward referral to a specialist, usually a hepatologist. In most cases of high ferritin, 
secondary to inflammatory or other conditions, management of the underlying condition will lead to reduction in ferritin levels. For example, alcohol abstinence will usually lead to improvement in ferritin within weeks to months. And weight loss and improved control of diabetes and blood pressure will usually lead to lowering of levels in patients with metabolic syndrome. There is no evidence to support venesection therapy in patients with increased ferritin associated with liver disease, other than hemochromatosis. In conclusion, the finding of erased seroferritin is a common conundrum in modern-day clinical practice, both in primary and secondary care. Iron overload is a relatively uncommon cause of this picture and can be excluded by the finding of a normal transfer saturation. So consideration of the many reactive causes, like hepatic, malignant, renal, hematological and metabolic causes, is important. Many cases will not require further investigation if a few simple investigations are performed. Rarer causes will require specialist advice for genetic testing. So that is it, a review of the laboratory investigations of erased serum ferritin. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice, but only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.